AMD have seemingly come out of nowhere and spooked the market with what seems like a very aggressive pricing structure. At $999, the RX 7900 XTX is going to be their flagship GPU, or are AMD going to try and rob you out of that $999? Let's discuss. Never pay full price for Windows 10 or 11 again. With today's video sponsor, SED Keys, you can get activated for as little as $15 using that coupon, BFTYC. Links in the description below. So the first thing I'm going to talk about here is the two most positive things that come out of this presentation. Because last time I looked at AM5, I was quite skeptical, I was quite negative. So I'm going to start off with the positive, then we'll get on to the negative, where the first thing is the power efficiency. I liked it how AMD focused on power efficiency. I think going forward, especially if we look at Europe with the inflation numbers going on there and massive skews of those inflation numbers coming from, of course, power consumption, I think going forward, power consumption and ultimately efficiency is going to be a massive focus for not just GPU companies, but pretty much any enthusiast tech company out there. And even if we start branching into the realm of TVs and even things like your fridge in your home, I think people are going to be focusing on power efficiency a lot more in the future than they have been in the past. And so for AMD to come out and say you're going to be getting roughly a 54% increase in power efficiency, this actually put a big smile on my face. Though as for these efficiency gains, AMD will be delivering these via two different methods. And that is that they've completely redesigned the RDNA based GPU as opposed to RDNA 2. This time around, they're going with an MCM design or a multi-chiplet layer design. And how they're doing this is they're using for the memory bit bus, a six layer design. And then for the main compute unit in the middle, they're going with the single design. And so they're spreading this across five nanometer and six nanometer, and they're cutting down costs by essentially increasing the yields by using smaller dies all together on the GPU and then linking that up and then also using the six nanometer where they don't need the performance increases as much as say the five nanometer where they need that. So overall, it's a very impressive design in terms of getting the most, not just out of the power consumption of the GPU, but also in terms of bringing down the cost of the GPU too. But also when it comes to the power efficiency, they are doing what they're known as decoupling the clocks. And so essentially they're peaking the efficiency for where it's best suited on those two different designs on the GPU. So to break this down in simple terms, if one part of the GPU can benefit from higher clock speeds and give more performance without increasing power consumption so much, then it's better to do that on that part of the GPU than on the other part that may not be efficient at that same clock speed as the other part of the GPU. So back to that 54% number, they're saying you're going to get this efficiency gain because of the gains that are coming through in gaming where they're offering up to a 1.7x rasterization performance increase. And then for ray tracing, you're also getting a similar performance benefit. So somewhere between 50 to 70% increase in total performance, but doing so with a minimal bump in power consumption. Where if you look at the power consumption of the 7900 XTX, it's coming in at 355 watt TDP. And that is similar to the previous flagship, the RX 6950 XT. Then when we do take a step back and we put on the skepticism hat, we will start to draw in some wait and see advice here because there are some things that did concern me, not just about these efficiency numbers, but also about the benchmark numbers presented. Though I'll talk about the second thing that impressed me first, and ultimately that was the price, where they're coming in at 999 USD for the 7900 XTX, which is going to be the best model GPU you can get from AMD. Where if we compare that to the RTX 4090, that came in at 1599, but that did offer pretty much a 2X gain over their RTX 3090. And if we compare it versus the 3090 Ti, it actually came in at $400 cheaper than that model and still offered very big performance gains. So in terms of what Nvidia delivered, they did come through in the end, but 1599 was still a very high price to stomach, even if you did have quite a bit of money stashed and you did like getting the latest and greatest. Though where this $999 price point, I think, 
is going to be the most successful is when we compare that to Nvidia's RTX 4080, the upcoming 16 gigabyte model, which is gonna be hitting the shelves at 1199. And here is where AMD looks to have a card that will be $200 cheaper and potentially more efficient and also give out more performance, especially when it comes to rasterization. And so for AMD, this could be their biggest victory in terms of gaining market share where people don't want to spend an extra $600 going to the RTX 4090 from Nvidia, but still want high-end 4K gaming and hopefully the rasterization performance does deliver. So in terms of pricing, I feel like the $999 price point here is a big win already for AMD, providing they can back it up with the performance. Where I'm gonna put a big disclaimer, as with all announcements and rumors where you're only getting benchmarks from the company themselves, I'm gonna say do take this with a fine grain of salt in that that grain of salt will dissolve very quickly if you put it in your mouth. And so what you wanna be getting out of these companies is golden information that doesn't dissolve. Gold is forever. And so you're gonna to have to wait for that golden information, which will come out from independent review sites like Tech Yes City, for example. So that's the biggest warning here is that these numbers promised are always going to be a best case scenario. And so if we start playing devil's advocate here, here's where the skeptical part of me is starting to come out and ask a, quite a few questions about this presentation. First of all, if you do like value, even on the high end, it looks like the 7900 XTX is going to be better value than the little brother, the RX 7900 XT. Well, that's looking like you're getting a 10% drop in price for roughly, at least on the surface, looks like a 15% drop in performance where they've cut off one of the six MCDs and they've also giving you four gigabytes less VRAM, but they're also giving lower clocks as well in terms of raw specifications. So the XTX model, the flagship GPU, just like Nvidia is doing with their RTX 4090, at least on the Surface versus the 4080, it looks like the flagship GPUs versus their next contender in line are the ones to get, even if you not just like the best performance, but also like getting more value out of the high end. Though digging deeper into those specifications, here is where if we cut down the raw numbers on what was delivered at the presentation, we can still see that AMD is using GDDR6 versus GDDR6X. Though also looking at those specifications a little bit more in depth, I remember people were promising a lot of the rumors, and this is honestly why I don't put much weight on rumors, because a lot of the times they can be way off the mark. A lot of the rumors were saying that we were going to get this card that was just going to slaughter Nvidia or even the RTX 4090, and it was going to do so at a better price and much better power efficiency. But anywhere in this presentation, AMD had no mention of the RTX 4090 whatsoever. And so I thought that was a little concerning since if we look at their AM5 presentation, they were using the best product out at the time to pretty much absolutely poop all over Intel. So when it comes to the GPU division, they were very reluctant to compare it to the RTX 4090, which I'm sure they could have got their hands on in between the time they were doing the presentation since when the 4090 was released to get out some benchmark numbers and even show it in games where AMD has an advantage versus Nvidia. Though back to the performance gains, here's where AMD is focusing on a up to 70% performance increase in raw 4K rasterization figures. Though I do put caution in the wind here because the compute units themselves from the previous generation have really only increased 20% and the stream processors have made a massive gain, but this is due to the stream processors being essentially split in two, just like Ada Lovelace did. However, Ada Lovelace did have absolutely massive clock gains from previous Ampere GPUs. This time around, we're getting similar clock speeds. And so if rasterization performance doesn't end up being 70% higher and say it's more, say 30 or 40%, and that's because the raw specifications aren't getting a huge increase from the core. So the benchmark numbers here, I do put out a huge caution in the wind, considering we only got three games with very vague figures on raw rasterization, where the other three games they showed in terms of performance numbers 
was with ray tracing turned on. And also if we look at the ray tracing performance itself, it looks like this generation, they're basically catching up to Nvidia's RTX 3000 series. So the RTX 4000 series is still going to hold, in my opinion, a massive increase in raw ray tracing performance. Though pulling out the shovel once again and digging deeper into this presentation showed me that there was some cause for concern here where AMD was then starting to focus on 8K gaming numbers and they were doing so with FSR turned on and essentially that's the upscaling technology. So you weren't getting true 8K numbers, but also they had this focus on 8K ultra wide where the resolution, if we look at the raw pixel count, that is nowhere near raw 8K. So calling it 8K ultra wide is in my opinion, very misleading because it makes it sound like you're actually getting more pixels than an 8K TV, for example, which you're not. So I was looking at these 8K benchmarks. I really just wanted to get back to the 4K numbers while I was re-watching that presentation. And then for the 4K numbers, we really didn't get a whole lot of information there. Though to break this down in simple terms, do not pre-order this thing at this point in time. Just like the RTX 4000 series, I'm holding caution in the wind. I am optimistic though I'm cautiously optimistic where I would like this GPU to give you 50 to 70% raw rasterization increase. Though the skeptic in me does draw attention to the compute units, the extra 20%, and then the clock speeds not having gained a whole lot. And I do start to say, okay, are these 70% rasterization gains going to be actually realized if we just get down into the games and we start playing with 4K settings that are uncapped. Though the final part of today's video will be going into the neutral aspects, parts that I don't personally care for a whole lot as an enthusiast, where we already spoke about the two or three most important things, and that is the price, efficiency, and the performance. Though here's where we move on to the extra sort of augmented features that AMD is gonna throw in. That is, they're going with DisplayPort 2.1, where they made a focus of saying these will support massive resolutions and monitors will come out that will support DisplayPort 2.1. But for me personally, using a high-end, say for instance, 4K OLED, HDMI 2.1 does the job. It does the job absolutely fine. I've had no problems with it. So the current gen GPUs, RX 6000, RTX 3000, RTX 4000, they all have HDMI 2.1 ports. So for me, the DisplayPort 2.1 wasn't really anything, oh my God, I've got to go out and buy this for DisplayPort 2.1 because I'm sure all those new monitors will have a HDMI 2.1 port on them as well. If anything, I was much more critical of GPU manufacturers not including enough HDMI 2.1 ports where I'd like to see at least two of these on any GPU, especially coming close to $1,000. But the fact that AMD is going with DisplayPort 2.1 is a good point, but if you do say for instance want to go out and get a current 4k oled that doesn't have display port 2 or 2.1 then you're still going to have to use hdmi 2.1 so that's why i personally am very focused on hdmi 2.1 at this time because the monitors out there have the tech that support it and the monitors out there that are high end especially if you don't mind buying a used 4k oled like i've been doing here in japan you can get some of the best value utilizing HDMI 2.1. Next up is the AV1 encoding and decoding. And here's where the encoding is going to be the biggest benefit here for people producing content. Though why I'm neutral on this is that the RTX 4000 series is going to have this, especially on the models that are going to be competing at a similar price point to the XTX. For example, the RTX 4080 and 4070. Then next up is the power connectors. And here's where actually I am a little bit positive about this in that they're still using the connectors that are tried and true in that everyone has access to PCIe 8 pin connectors and the new 16 pin has unfortunately had a little bit of controversy surrounding it where some people have had their cables melting. And in terms of AMD taking a stab at Nvidia, that is exactly what competition is. You've always got to take a look at your competitors weak points 
and then try and capitalize on them. So AMD did take what I thought was an interesting stab at Nvidia, but the next two points that they made about not having to change your case and then also not having to change your power supply, thought they were pretty much moot points because if you've got a 3090, especially a Founders Edition card, that's already huge. So if you've got the room for that in your case, then the 4090 will most likely fit. And also in terms of power supplies, I've used a 4090, even a 4090 overclocked edition here at the studio extensively. And an 850 watt power supply has been absolutely fine, even with piggyback adapters. Though now we're onto the final talking point, and that is the technologies that AMD promises to deliver. And that is the FSR 3. And this is where, just like DLSS 3, when I was talking about that, it was a wait and see approach. And for me personally, I'm still waiting on DLSS 3 to get improvements and be more widely spread before I take a look at that again. So I'm going to do a wait and see approach with FSR 3 just the same. And then the last thing that I'll talk about is their new Hyper Engine, which is sort of mixing in all their previous technologies and also enhancing it to give gamers not just better latency, but also a better gaming experience. So I do look forward to seeing how that's implemented in games. It does look like it will be a similar feature to NVIDIA's uh, Reflex technology, which does lower the latency there. Anyhow, guys, do let us know in the comments section below, what do you think of this presentation? Do you agree with the points that I mentioned here? Were there any talking points that you guys want to discuss, say perhaps in a future live stream? Or are there any observations that you made that were worth pointing out in the comment section below? Love reading those thoughts and opinions. So as with any announcement, wait for the final benchmarks. There's nothing to lose by waiting a couple of days, especially given this environment right now where money's tightening up. The used market is offering absolutely incredible deals right now where I'll put a link up here to the recent parts hunt I did and it was just GPUs galore and they were at crazy price performance levels that I think the new market, even the XTX, is just going to come nowhere near matching. So in terms of price performance already out there, don't be afraid to go get a really good deal on a used card because there's just so many good deals out there right now on those cards. But in terms of wanting the best performance possible, I would wait. I wouldn't pre-order anything just at this point in time just because the numbers, just like NVIDIA, I am skeptical when I see these announcements and I see these massive hyped up numbers where they only really gave us, in terms of raw rasterization, three games at 4K. So I am waiting to see more there, that's for sure. However, I do hope to give you guys day one coverage. So if you want to see that the moment it drops, then do be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell to get the content as soon as it drops around here at Tech Yes City. Also, sorry I didn't live stream this one, but it was 4 a.m. in the morning for me in my local time. Literally the worst place in the world to try and live stream this AMD event. I'm living in it in terms of time. So yeah, 4 a.m. live stream. There's a lot of things that you will see on Tech yes City, but a 4 a.m. live stream is not one of them. <laughs> Anyhow, guys, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye. Wait, should I do that? Peace out for now. Bye.